slide. Today we are going to look at 9.2, graphing simple rational function notes. You are going to need your calculator today, so if you don't have your calculator out, go ahead and press pause and get it out. So first let's look at see what a rational function actually is. It's any function in the form f of x is equal to p of x over q of x. And we'll look more into what this means. So we're going to consider the very simple rational function y equals 1 over x. What are the possible values of x, y? So we want to think about what numbers can we plug in for x so that we get an actual answer. So are there any numbers I always think about instead of what can I put in, I think what can't I put in. So are there any values of x that I cannot plug into this equation? Yes, the only number that I can't put in there is zero. If I plug in zero, one over zero is going to be undefined. So what numbers can I actually put in for x that I can plug in all real numbers? Except zero. So the way I would write this, all reals, x cannot equal zero. Now I do use all reals and not necessarily all natural or all whole because you can have decimals. I could do one divided by 1.2, one divided by 1.4, so you can have decimals so we want all reals, we want all positives, we want all negatives. The only thing we don't want is zero. So then we think about what numbers can I get out for y? What are all the po possible values I could get for y? So then I think, okay, that's a lot. Again, what numbers can y not be? It's always better to think about it, what can it not be opposed to what can it be, because there's so much more what it can be than what it can't be. So you look at it, you've thought, the only number that y can't be, again, is zero. And some of you are probably thinking, okay, where is that coming from? I'm plugging numbers in for x. The numerator is already predetermined as 1. The only way that y could end up being 0 is if it was 0 over something else. It has to be 0 divided by that. And since 1's already on the top, no matter what I plug in the bottom, it's never going to be 0. If I plug in a fraction, my number on top is going to be bigger, bigger, bigger. If I type in a, like a number, like 1 over 100, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the only number it can't be is 0. So again, it's all real numbers except 0. And the way we're going to write this is all reals. Y cannot be 0. You just want to make sure that you're specifying whether it's X or Y. All right, so what can x be? What can y not be? x cannot be 0, which we talked about. y cannot be 0, which we talked about. When we have these values that x and y cannot be, these are called asymptotes. Asymptotes are defined as a line that represents impossible numbers in a function. So asymptotes are lines that our graph is going to approach but never actually touch. No matter what number I plug in for x, it could approach 0, but it's never actually going to get to 0. So what we want to do now is graph the function y equals 1 over x, and we're going to do that by making a table of values. So we're going to plug our values in. If we've got 1 over 1 half, hopefully you did not say 1 fourth, multiplying by the reciprocal, that would be 1 times 2 over 1, which would just be 2. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 
and we know where these values come from, that they create a point, one half comma two. So we go to our graph, one half up two, there's our first point. One, one, two and one half, three and one third. So as it goes, we can see that it's approaching zero but never touching. It's approaching zero but never touching. It's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller but never actually getting there. Alright, so now this is where we're going to get it out our calculator. So go ahead and get it out. Alright, so we plug this in. Our y equals 1 divided by x. We're going to start off and make sure that we have a standard window. So we go to zoom 6. And when we graph it, we do see what we have on our paper, that top half. We also see a bottom half. When you graph this in your calculator, there are two symmetrical parts are called branches. For each point x, y on one branch, there is a corresponding point, negative x, negative y, on the other branch. So if we have one half two, we also have a negative one half, negative two. So negative one half, negative two. We have a negative one, negative one. Oh, I didn't do that first one right. Negative one half, negative two. Negative one, negative one. Negative two, negative one half, negative three, one third. And there is that second branch that we did not have originally. The shape of this graph is called a hyperbola. And we have talked about hyperbolas this year when we talked about conics. This is actually a more simple hyperbola than what we had talked about. Some rules for our hyperbolas. If A is greater than zero, then the branches of the hyperbola are in the first and third quadrants. If A is less than zero, the branch of the hyperbola or in the second and fourth quadrants. So if it's a positive, and we know that our quadrants, I guess we can review that, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So if it's positive, it's going to be in one and three, as we had here. If it's negative, it's gonna be in two and four. And as the absolute value of A gets bigger, so regardless of whether it's a positive graph or a negative graph, because that determines the quadrant, but as the number gets bigger, the branches are going to move farther and farther away from the origin. So here it was super, super close. We had 1 as our A value, so they're really close to the origin. If that was 10, they'd be moved farther away, such as, they'd be like way out here way down here. So as our number gets bigger, it's going to move away from the origin. All right, so let's go ahead and flip over to the back page. So we started with a very simple rational expression, rational equation. All rational functions, here's a different form, y equals a over x minus h plus k have asymptotes. And those asymptotes are at x equals h. So the very first one we looked at was an example of a very simple one. Here's the general equation for them. And this is going to be our vertical. And we look here, the vertical, it's a vertical line, so it's x equals, it's x equals the h value. And then you're also going to have a horizontal one your horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals, because a horizontal line, k. So whatever that k value is, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. Now, you have to know that these asymptotes are only going to be true for end behavior, which we have talked about what end behavior means. Right now, in the first graph, we only had two pieces. Sometimes we have three pieces to our graph, which I think we probably will only have a couple examples this chapter. The asymptotes are only true for the outside pieces. If there's a middle third piece, it's not going to be true. 
This is something that you're going to get into more in pre-calc, but just a note to itself, only true for end behavior. So if you had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, a middle piece might actually go through 1. All right, so we've got y equals 4 over x minus 6, quantity minus 3. So we're looking at our vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is h, so we look there, h is going to be 6. So our vertical asymptote is x equals 6. Our horizontal, according to what we just talked about, is k. So we look, our k value is a negative 3, so this is y equals negative 3. Go ahead and graph. We have vertical asymptote at 6. When we graph our asymptotes, which we've talked about early in this year, we graph them as dashed lines, because it's not actually part of our graph and horizontal at negative 3. Now if these are the asymptotes, those are the values that it can't be, domain, all real, so if we're going left and right, it can be any x value except for it can't be 6, because we've got a vertical asymptote there. If we're looking at the range, we're looking at our y values going up and down. As we go up and down, the only y value excluded is a negative 3, so y cannot be a negative 3. We still need more to our graph. We need to see the shape of it. So to get the shape of our graph, we're going to plot three points to the left of the vertical asymptote and three points to the right. So we look at our vertical asymptote at 6. We've got to go to our calculator. So we go to y equals, we plug in 4 divided by, make sure when you type this into your calculator you put parentheses around the denominator of your fraction. So x minus 6 and then minus 3. When we graph it, we see the shape that's being formed. We look at the vertical asymptote we see 6. We want to find three points to the left. So I'm going to go directly to the left and pick 5. So we can find that value. We can go to our table, so second graph. I'm going to find my x value of 5. And you can see that we had a vertical asymptote at 6 and that's why we got an error message. There is no point there. So three points could be Neg or positive 5, negative 7, 4, negative 5, and 3, and a negative 4.3. When we're graphing decimals, it doesn't really make sense to write down 4 or 5 decimals because you're not going to make a difference if it's 4.3 or 4.333 when you're looking at your graph. So we've got 5, negative 7, 4, negative 5 and 3, negative 4.3. So again, it's going to come and approach that asymptote. It's going to approach the asymptote on the other side as well. We also want three points to the right. So again, if we start at 6, our next three points to the right are 7, 1, according to our table. 8, negative 1, and 9, negative 1.7. So 7, 1, we go ahead and plot those points, 8, negative 1, and 9, negative 1.7. Again, it's always going to approach the asymptotes. When you're drawing your graph, you want to be very careful not to cross the asymptotes. All right, we've got one more problem left. And this is our other form of a hyperbola. So we started with a very simple one. We looked at our last rational function form. And now we have where we have ax plus b and cx plus d. These are also going to be hyperbolas. For these, the vertical asymptote occurs 
at the x value that makes the denominator equal to 0. So we set that cx plus d equal to 0 and we solved. The horizontal asymptote is the line a over c, so whatever these coefficients are when you divide them. So we look at number 2 and we notice that the difference between the two forms are our first form, we have some number k being added on the outside, no variable on top. This form is there's no number being added on the outside of our fraction, but we've got x's on top and bottom. So when we look at our vertical asymptote, we set the bottom equal to 0. We move that over where it becomes negative 3, so x is going to be equal to a negative 1. Horizontal asymptote, we take those coefficients that are belonging to the x's, so that's going to be y equals 1 -third. We draw in our asymptotes, vertical line at a negative 1, make sure that it's dashed, horizontal at 1 -third. So when we look, domain are all possible x values, going left and right, the only x value that it can't be is a negative 1. The only y value it can't be when we're going up and down is y cannot be 1 -third. What I want you to do is plug this into your calculator and see if you can get the six correct points you need for your graph. Alright, when you hit your graph, your graph you got should have looked like this. And just remember, if your graph does not look like this, in your calculator you have to put parentheses around the top of the fraction and around the bottom of the fraction. If you don't, it's not going to come out correctly. This part of the chapter is very, very heavy on the calculator, so you've got to make sure that you've got the calculator skills down. Then to get my points, I go to second graph. My asymptote is at a negative 1, so I'm going to choose a negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, just the next three points over to the left and the next three points over to the right to get the shape of my graph. And when I draw my lines in, I approach my asymptotes. All right. And that is all for today.